Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. It's our favorite time of the week. It's time to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, first up we've got several new uh, releases from Civivi and We Knife Company. Sister companies, of course, Civivi, the more budget oriented. New versions of the full-sized Bull Mastiff coming in uh, just a little bit over $55. This version right here with the natural Micarta, or sorry, natural G10 handles here, uh, $56.75. That is a lot of knife for that kind of money. 3.8 inches is the blade length, nearly four full inches long of 9CR series stainless, so roughly 440C metallurgically. That is a big, impressive blade. Full flat grind on that cleaver shape. Appropriate thickness right there. So you've got a strong blade, but a very efficient slicing blade. The, uh, the fuller there at the top may actually impact slicing a little bit if things get caught up in it. I'm talking like probably minor degrees of difference there. But it also allows you to open the knife one-handed using that as kind of a thumb channel if you'd rather not use the flipper tab. Either one works quite well though, as you can see. Ball bearings are in that pivot for a nice friction-free motion. You've got a reversible deep carry pocket clip, handle kind of straight and neutral. This is going to work well as just a heavier work knife, no matter what your hand size, for not a lot of money either. This is just one of those knives that quite honestly makes you smile. Couple other uh, new colors here. You can get uh, a black stone wash blade as opposed to the stone washed finish on this. And that comes with either a, a coarse finished black G10 or a dark green micarta. So that's pretty cool. Next up is a new button lock flipper from Civivi the Conspirator. Several versions of this. Uh, prices very reasonable for a button lock flipper. Uh, starting at like just under 80 bucks, depending on which version you get. There's some wood versions. There's a Damascus steel version with a uh, green micarta. Uh, this one right here, you've got your black canvas micarta with a matte finish. Nitro V blade steel here. Really cool, really broad drop point. Again, an appropriate thickness with a full flat grind. Not crazy thin, but a little bit on the thinner side. Awesome, awesome utilitarian blade right here. Love the sliciness of it. Love the versatility of that drop point. I love the action that Civivi is getting with their button locks. It truly is very, very good. And the Nitro V blade steel here is a nice bump up from their base metals too. Really cool. Blade length there is three and a half, so plenty to get work done. Like the Bull Mastiff, we've also got a fairly neutral handle, so lots of different hand sizes will work. It's not quite rolled over at the back. You have a more of an abrupt and abrupt stop but even my slightly larger than average hands, I've got plenty of room on there just for all four of my fingers. And if you're leading, leaning off the edge a little bit, it's not gonna be much of a problem. Very, very cool. Reversible deep carry pocket clip here too. And unlike the Bull Mastiff, even though this is a right hand bias lock, it's still gonna be very easy for lefties to use. Not a compromised closing action whatsoever. You can also, unlike their button lock Elementum, use this little fuller right here to do a thumb open because you don't actually have to push the button down to allow the blade to move. So that's pretty cool also. Man, just a really impressive blade shape and fit and finish. As all Civivis are really good, you got that nice thin edge, very sharp out of the box and good to go. Next up, we've got some new versions of the Bob Terzola designed Tamashi fixed blade. Black uh, finished D2 on these, a little hint of stone washing there. And you can get it with black G10 or this dark green micarta for the handles. And prices on these uh, just above 65 to start. Uh, this one right here, I think is about 68, 69 bucks for the micarta version. Blade length, as mentioned, just over four inches, or sorry, blade steel, as mentioned, is D2, and the length is just over four inches with that trailing point shape hewing real closely to kind of like the traditional Japanese style of Tanto blade shape. Two-piece Micarta handles, but no, uh, no visible tang. This is a full-length tang, but you've got the two pieces of Micarta 
surrounding the tank so you're not feeling any of the steel right there you do notice the line a little bit more than the g10 models not that you feel it but it's just a little bit more visible down to the nature of what micarta acts like as a material but speaking of that you do get the benefits of as it gets wet or sweaty it's going to feel a little bit grippier and the overall shape works great just on its own even without that uh, that extra grippiness really nice little section of contouring there fits in the hand quite nicely orients well nice broad thumb pad there as part of the handle so you can really put some pressure onto the blade and of course you got that nice uh, kind of box braided fob at the end as well sheath system very well set up out of the box you've got nicely fitting kydex and appropriate on a bob terzola design you've got their t-clip on the back which is a bob terzola thing as well it's even more versatile than your standard tech lock because of the slot in the middle section here rather than a section of holes. So it's gonna work on even more things out there. And you also have more adjustability on the uh, belt size bar right there. Since it doesn't have notches, it's simply adjusted with a set screw as well. And if you want one of those separately for some of your other sheath systems, these are available for like six, seven, eight bucks, like real inexpensive. Uh, if you want to get your hands on one of those next up we have jumping up to we the more premium sister brand the curvaceous and yes it is an eric aux design uh, really cool knife uh, some carbon fiber inlaid versions on the titanium frame with the integral bolster natural g10 but i really like the dark green micarta here with the black titanium finish very cool Price on this one just under 300 bucks and goes up or down a little bit depending on which version you get. Uh, blade length 3.7 inches and it is a 20 CV steel with a compound ground trailing point shape. Very cool. You've got your hollow ground section here at the back and a more robust tip with the flat grind, which is a good thing since that tip itself really does come down to a almost needle like consistency. So the little extra strength out there is gonna be appreciated. Feel in the hand, it might be just a little bit cramped for my hand size. You do have a hint of a, uh, a bird's beak here at the back and it doesn't really feel natural to kind of hang off over the edge unless you're intentionally putting your pinky on the other side and choking back a little bit. That works well, but yeah, I, I wanna try and scrunch my hand in there. I'm talking like it's, it's a fraction of an inch uh, for my hand size. Most people probably won't have an issue with that. Titanium frame locking bar there, ball bearings in the pivot, folds up uh, nice and sleek uh, considering how broad and how curvy it is when opened. And the flipper tab there lets you open that up real easy. You've got their subtle finish here. It's a hand finished uh, blade, I believe, but it has almost like a bead blasted look, but finer, like more premium feeling. Really cool. Next up, we have something with kind of similar vibes, but a little more toned down in terms of its kind of sweepy nature. This is the Quixotic. Uh, price on these about 250, uh, about 260, sorry about that. A Little bit smaller, a little bit more toned down, like I said, but still plenty of kind of high-end stuff going on here. Milled titanium handles with a lot of intricate detailing going on. I'm particularly fond of kind of this blackened bronze finish that uh, Wee does on a lot of things, but you can also get it in a uh, blue or a gray titanium. Those are both available with a bead blasted blade as opposed to the black stone wash right here, about three and a half inches long and 20 CV steel. Now the belly on that blade is Continuous. You've got essentially, yeah, not, no section of completely straight edge at any point. It's all curved, which is really nice. And even though it looks like it might be a trailing point, you do have a just a hint of drop here right near the tip, make it a little bit more sturdy. Uh, so it doesn't, the tip doesn't actually rise above the line of the spine. So technically not a trailing point, but I guess we can call that upswept because uh, it's definitely not a drop point. That's for sure. High flat grind, thin enough blade stock, nice swedge here. Very stylish looking and very, very effective. Interestingly, in contrast to the, uh, the conspirator we just looked at, uh, sorry, the, of the curvaceous we just looked at, even though this handle is smaller because of the way it works on the end, 
I can kind of hang off the back a little bit. So I don't feel quite as cramped on this knife as on that curvaceous. Same deal with the pivot though, ball bearings, flipping action, excellent. All right, next up, new version of the Banter. Uh, really cool knife coming in at one, just over 130 right now, about 132. Uh, same blade, except the black finish here, S35 VN steel, sub three inch, nearly symmetrical spear point, thin blade stock, high flat grind, very versatile, very slicey, very day-to-day -day friendly. Backing up to the handle now, rather than G10, we have this shredded carbon fiber look going on. Lightens up the knife a little bit over the, uh, the previous version. Uh, I don't have a, uh, a weight in front of me, but just judging off of remembered feel, you definitely get that. You also get the deep carry pocket clip, single side only on this particular knife and an inset liner lock. The handles here do have uh, one of the latest improvements to this design. You've got a little bit of a scallop on the inside to make lock bar access a little bit easier. So you can close it up quite nicely. Nice tidy package in the pocket when you're ready to use the blade. It pops open on the bearings really, really nicely. And for such a small knife, the handle design manages to give you a really full feeling grip and a grip that's gonna work for multiple hand sizes again because of, the, of a handle design that lets you hang off the back without feeling like you're cramped whatsoever. And then you can also get right behind the edge for maximum leverage on those push cuts too, thanks to that handle design. Really effective and one of the fancier production versions out there right now and available for not too much more than the standard version. Speaking of lighter weight knives, we have a new version of the Eidolon, a Justin Lundquist design. Uh, previously, the integral carbon fiber was available with a satin finished, um, was it satin or bead blast? I can't remember, but not a black uh, blade. Now you can get it with the black stonewashed blade. Same thing with a G10 version. Prices on these uh, were about 230 for this carbon fiber, same as the original. And the other one should fall right in with the uh, the other G10 versions, a little bit under 200 for those. Blade length, just under three inches. So it's another very uh, EDC friendly size you can take just about anywhere. You might not think so at a quick glance because this does look like a double edged dagger, but you don't have to worry about uh, any of the complications that come with a double ground or a uh, double edged blade. It has that dagger profile, but only one side is sharpened. The top side is ground nice and thin though, and it's essentially just a giant swedge. So it's gonna be real, or it's gonna aid in the efficiency when you're moving around corners, which is really nice. 20 CV steel, excellent stuff. Really cool, subtle pocket clip right there. It's not completely deep carry, but it sits perfectly flush into that handle and it's gonna look really subtle on the outside. Sub two ounces on the weight of this knife too. So it's gonna carry really easily and a really nicely executed top flipper. You can use that either as a thumb front flipper style thing, or you can even do the over the top index finger flick quite, quite nicely on either of these. I feel like that kind of small size and that form factor a little bit, but you want something even fancier, have some new D-Rocket uh, Fukushus this week. Quite expensive on these guys though, 800 bucks, but these guys are decked out in some kind of World War II aircraft inspired uh, paint jobs is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? Uh, really cool. We've got the T devil B 52 is the first one here. You've got that kind of army green army planes, whatever. Uh, but that green styling there got the little Tasmanian devil right there. The uh, bomb icons, the contrasting yellow looks really cool. The inset liner lock here is really nicely done too. Unlike a lot of inset liner locks, for instance, you know, this, uh, well, that's not an inset. Like that banter right there, when you push the lock bar down, you still see the lock bar from a, uh, a bottom up, whatever, viewpoint. This guy actually nestles into the rest of the handle when you push it down. Really nice to see something like that. So you don't even see the uh, tab of the lock bar there at all when the knife is closed up, which is pretty cool. You can open it one-handed with the fuller, or you can do that front flipper thing that I'm never the best at, but worked pretty well. There, three-inch blade, M390, sheep's foot shape, 
hollow grind on this guy. Very, very impressively thin edge on these. Really nicely done, in fact. And a very acute tip as well. Deep carry pocket clip, lanyard point there underneath the pocket clip, which is kind of interesting. And the other colorway we've got, what is uh, this one called? This is the Bomb Boy Revenge. You've got a little anthropomorphic uh, bomb with the fuse there on the uh, back, but I really like the jaws on the front around the pivot right there. I think that really sets things off quite nicely. Really neat package when they're folded up and definitely a conversation piece, something that is going to make a very good impression. All right, next up, we've got the Finch Roadrunner, and I could not decide which handle inlay version to show you, so we brought them all out while I awkwardly hold them so you can see them. Um, really cool knife. This first one is the Roadrunner Hornet. Uh, it has a bolstered yellow resin handle. Really cool material and the stainless steel handle with the integrated bolsters on front and back. You've got the glow in the dark Finch shield on the front and just a really cool and unique inlay right there. Very nice. We've got that bolster style frame lock there on the side. Two flipper tabs. You've got your standard flipper. I haven't tried to, uh, to pocket deploy this yet, but there is jimping on the front side of this, so it should work. But you've got another dagger like blade when open 3.4 inches. Decidedly not double ground. You've got a standard flat grind. You've got their 154 cm steel on this guy. Horizontal grain running through the blade and the bolsters creates a really elegant and refined look. And that's where these things really stand up quite nicely is their feel of refinement and some details you just typically don't see at $145 price point these days. Milled pocket clip, right side tip up only. Really cool knife. Uh, the next handle is the Burlwood version, and they call this one uh, the Roadrunner Burlwood. That's handy. Um, instead of giving it a separate name like they do on some. Really cool. What kind of wood is this, actually? I'm not sure. Thomas, do you know? Mm, do I look like a wood guy? We don't want to get into what you look like anymore. People can't know these things. <laughs> um, really cool. It almost... I don't even want to say it. it almost looks like some kind of burly walnut, but I don't know. Probably came from a tree. Oh, it's tree wood. <sighs> Thomas, so wise. I know that much. <laughs> Next up, I am a sucker for red dyed bone, and you get that jigged red bone here on this version too, which you also don't see on a lot of flippers these days. You see it on more traditional knives, jig or you know, bone handle material in general, but not a lot of you know more modern folders. So kudos to Finch for doing that. They've done that on several of their knives up to this point. So I'm, I'm really happy they're still doing it because I really dig that. Another neutral handle going to work quite well. A little bit on the blockier side. So you've got plenty to hold on to. It's not a super, super thin carrying knife. One of those D rockets would uh, would take care of that a little bit better. But a very awesome knife nonetheless. Speaking of being a sucker for red jig bone, Look at this case. It looks so good. Uh, new version of their Hawk Bill pruner comes in about 80 bucks for this version. And you've got a carbon steel blade on this one. You don't see that as much anymore from case, but they still do do it on some very select models, which is very cool. High polished finish on this one. Blade length is about three inches, but because of the recurve, you've got more actual edge to work with full flat grind. And as if you've seen our cardboard slayers video, you know, this style of blade is going to be a very effective box ripper. Really cool. I wish we had this one in stock when we uh, when we did that video because I'm a sucker for red jig bone. What can I say? Very cool knife put together really nicely. These guys have a really nice half stop with the name like pruner. Of course, it'll work great as a, uh, a gardening knife works really well. In fact, the handles even more designed for a reverse grip or a pairing type of grip. But it's going to be a great utility knife if you do a lot of any kind of cut where you don't want that blade to slip out of the cut while you while you work. Very, very cool knife. 
Next up, we've got the four inch version of the Topps Silent Hero. This is the Silent Hero 4. Comes in about 147 bucks right now. And I am a little bit smitten with this. Uh, the previous version of the knife uh, was about a five and three quarter inch blade, so nearly six. Still a very manageable knife due to the way it was made, but I really love just kind of the tractability or the very agile feel of this four inch version. You've got 1095 carbon steel, as with most Topps knives, you got an eighth inch blade with a saber height flat grind there. Very cool drop point. Man, this is this is a great camp knife, you guys. Maybe even a, uh, a compact survival knife uh, because it's going to be a blade that's gonna stand up to abuse, but it's not kind of an over ch overly chunky design. So it's gonna slice day to day and or camp to camp a little bit better than some other designs. Still highly protective of your front finger because you've got the finger guard there. The Micarta handles feel great in the hand, orients really nicely in a saber grip right here, especially pinches pretty nicely. Whether you just need a general purpose camp knife, whether you like the Silent Hero but wanted something a little uh, more compact for hunting uses, this is gonna work really well. Any kind of outdoor opportunity really is gonna be served nicely with this blade indeed. I will say if you, uh, I said this was a four inch version, but uh, the actual blade length tip to scale is about four and a quarter. So if that's a, a legal requirement where you live, just keep that in mind. If it's not, don't worry about it because it is a great size and shape. Uh, sheath is Kydex. It is set up right out of the box with two carry straps here. So it's, you know, horizontal carry, either, you know, cross draw. A lot of people like small of the back. Um, if you want to carry it with a more traditional kind of belt attachment, the uh, rivets on this don't actually line up with a large or a small tech lock, uh, but it looks like a T-clip that we talked about earlier might just be able to manage this uh, spacing due to that slot that we talked about. All right, next up, Got a couple Randalls to show you. The first is a model 46. Nope, I picked up the wrong one. Silly me. <laughs> the first is the model 46 World War II fighter right here. Price on this one coming in about 895 for this guy. And if you're familiar with Randall stuff, you know how just impressive they feel in the hand. If you're looking for like the best in modern metallurgy, you're not gonna find it here. This is Randall's uh, stainless steel that they use here and it's nothing high end, but the actual build quality and the durability of these knives is frankly legendary. Blade length here, six inches. You've got the trailing point here. A Little bit of a, uh, a cool touch to the spine. Reminds me a little bit of the Mac V SOG buoys right there. Handle, exceptionally cool. Burgundy linen micarta with the stainless or the uh, nickel uh, I believe it's nickel fittings. I don't think they're stainless fittings for the uh, guard and the butt cap there. Really cool, slightly larger hunting knife right here. General purpose camp knife, hollow ground blade on these guys. Not a chopper, it has more of a nimble feel going on. And if you get caught up in anything, like any good buoy, you've got that Ricasso feature right here that you can use to pull the knife out. And in fact, this one's finished a little bit more like a finger choil for the folks of you out there that like that and like to be able to choke up for finer detail work. Very, very impressive feeling knife. Uh, the sheath, traditional styled in black leather with a retention strap and a sharpening stone in the pouch in the front and a little bit of paracord here. Uh, is that paracord? No, maybe, maybe not. Some kind of cordage there for a little extra retention. Really nicely built sheath as well. Next up, we've got a Model 1 all-purpose fighter. This one coming in about 860 right now. Eight inch blade, they're stainless steel again. Green linen micarta, which looks oh so good next to the brass fittings. More traditional buoy style Ricasso on this one. And such a nimble feel to this knife. I mean, the balance point on this guy is like right at, or, or in fact, just a skosh behind uh, the guard right there. So even though you've got a big eight inch blade, it doesn't move against you. It likes to move with you as you move the knife. Hollow grind, big long swedge on this guy. Just a classic. Same style of sheath except brown and no extra cordage on this one. Expensive knives, yes, but we've got them in stock right now. So you don't have to go through Randall's uh, 
infamously long wait list to get your hands on a knife. Next up, we've got a new Medford. This is the Theseus Flipper, 550 uh, bucks for this guy. Typical Medford overbuilt quality right there, that kind of tank-like construction. Uh, 3.6-ish inch blade, D2 steel, hollow ground, bit of a swedge there. Really cool uh, feature there for thumb opening, as opposed to uh, the Fuller, which he does frequently on a lot of other models. You have this kind of two-step milled, half circle design going on. And speaking of circles, as I close the knife up there, check out that pocket clip. It's the circular uh, Medford logo right there for the clip retention, kind of interesting. Now, technically this titanium frame locker is also a flipper. You've got a really subtle flipper tab right there. And in fact, I'm finding I do have to put a little bit of wrist into it to get it to flip, uh, being such a small tab and being washer construction it doesn't fly out super crisply, but of course the washers do give you the benefit of dust resistance. To me, even though this is a flipper, this is much more of a two hand, or a, uh, sorry, a thumb opening personality for this knife. And it works really well with that two step cutout. That design provides just enough friction for my thumb to get in there and really push that blade open without the use of a thumb stud or a cutout uh, or a thumb uh, hole, I should say, which some people don't like the looks of or worry about the durability of. With a thick blade like this and Medford's build quality, I'm certainly not worried about the durability on this guy. All right, last but not least, uh, and it, checking the website, it looks like this actually just sold in between when we pulled it this morning and when we started to film. So I don't even, even know what the price on this was, but we have other versions of this knife without the multicam coating still available, at least right now while we are filming this video. Uh, for a little bit under 500 bucks on some of those versions. So let me talk to you about this knife in the, uh, in the meantime. Uh, just under four inches on the blade, S35 VN steel, compound ground Tonto with a little bit of belly on the leading edge there. Very, very cool. And in fact, the name of this knife is the Tonto. This is not the, uh, the harpoon or anything else. And sometimes that throws me off a little bit for, to have the actual knife name named after the blade shape but hey there you go nice premium steel similar to the medford you've got kind of thick overbuilt quality that kind of reassuring chunkiness in the hand not quite as hefty but still heftier than most other knives out there handles titanium this one's got a frag pattern and of course that camo pattern i said multi-cam earlier but that's not technically correct so don't come don't come at me bros Frame locking flipper on the back, you've got the lock and you've got this nice milled pocket clip with the roller cylinder there at the pinch point. Three position pocket clip, tip up or tip down on the right side or tip up on the left side. Lock up is nice and solid, feel in hand, plenty to grip right there. Flipping action on these also very good. These are ball bearing flippers, no washers here. Flips really nicely and you've got that fuller there if you wanna do. Use it as a thumb track for one hand opening that way. Really cool knives. And I sure hope there are a few more in stock still uh, by the time this video posts. If not, I'm sorry, but at least we got to look at a cool knife in the meantime. That's all I've got on the table for us today. Make sure to let me know your favorites down in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives that are still available, we'll have links in the description that take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas over there, and we're signing off. See you next time.